Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10 uh, live from the News Hub at Adisawe in a crime, Stephen Enti. You can also catch uh, News at 10 on your DSTV channel 279 and on our live stream on Facebook. You can also send us your comments on various social media platforms. But first, let's take you through the major news highlights of the day. Now, the MPP and the NDC are expected to meet on Tuesday, April 9, to kickstart the process of disbanding political vigilante groups. Ahead of that, Chairperson of the National Commission on Civic Education, Josephine Nkrumah, is urging the two parties to show good faith in their deliberation on disbanding political vigilante groups. And Member of Parliament for Ashama has sued government for sole sourcing $12.5 million agreement for medical deliveries via drone uh, to Fly Zipline Ghana Limited. Operators of the service Fly Zipline, who have also been joined to the suit, were not the only company providing the service at the time they were awarded the contract. Speaking to journalists in Accra, and as uh, Nobe noted, government failed to do due diligence. And the Dean of Students Affairs at the University of Education, winner by Dr. Kwesi Amponsa, says the university will absorb costs incurred in repairing damaged property after protests by students last month. Dr. Kwesi Amponsa spoke to newsmen after an academic board meeting held at the Winneberg campus on Monday. And uh, the Trades Unions Congress, TUC, has rejected the 50% cut in benchmark values announced by government last week. According to the TUC, the move would increase import and further depreciate the city. Secretary General of TUC, Dr. Yao Ba, who spoke with correspondent Daniel Poku in Accra, said the 50% cut in benchmark values should rather have been on some selected imported items. So those were our major news highlights. Up next is the big one. Remember, well, you can hear us live on 3FM 92.7 and follow our live stream on Facebook. Welcome back. Now, pupils in kindergarten, in KG to primary six will from the next academic year, which starts in September, have a new education curriculum that will put a premium on reading, writing, arithmetic and creativity. Dubbed the four R's, the new 12 subject curriculum will provide pupils with the needed foundation skills required for lifelong learning, creativity and national development. This follows a successful handling over of uh, handing over of the new KG to uh, B6 curricula by the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment uh, to the Ghana Education Service. President Ekufuado had in the State of the Nation address last February hinted of the development of the new curricula that will better prepare Ghana's pupils in school to meet global challenges. To help us do some analysis, we have uh, Peter Patienti, who is the executive, acting executive director of the Institute of Education Studies, joining us on the telephone lines now. Good evening, uh, Ms. Enti, and thank you extremely for your time. Now, with this new uh, curricula, would you agree that finally we've gotten it right with our basic education? Thank you very much, Stephen, and good evening. Yes. Um, I, I would I would cautiously say we are getting there. We are getting there because this new curriculum is a standard-based curriculum. I, I actually, those of us in the field of curriculum, mm. we we know that a standard-based curriculum is actually developed as looking at the various standards, mm. um, identifying skills, knowledge, and dispositions that students should demonstrate to meet these standards, and then identifying activities that will allow students to reach the goals of the 
standard. So you, if you look at the, the new curriculum that is being developed, there are set competencies, what we call core competencies, that students are supposed to exhibit. And if we are able to implement this very well, we are able to train the teachers to, to implement this very well, then we can sure say we are likely to get there. Mm. So let's look at the current challenges uh, facing the basic level. In your professional view, do you get the sense that uh, the introduction of this new curricula would bring any improvement, significant improvement at all in dealing with these challenges at the basic level? The, the fact is that if you look at the challenges facing the basic sector, they are multifaceted. They sprang from different angles, and it becomes difficult to single out a particular factor mm. and say that this is so important right. in achieving the, the quality education that we so much want to attain. But then you look at the various policies that have been, that have been rolled out. So you can group the factors or the challenges into teacher factors, school factors, issues with the curriculum. You can talk about issues with the students and other things. And you look at the various policies that have been rolled out, and then you just oppose it against the challenges. Then you see that there seems to be a concerted effort from all angles trying to help solve this particular problem. What, what I mean by this is there, there, there is the, the, the teacher uh, reform that is going on, which means that teachers should have a certain basic qualification of a degree to be able to teach. Now the curriculum is also being modified and improved to meet the challenges of the 21st century. There are issues with students' uh, challenges in terms of finances and other things. Capitation grants have been increased, although there are challenges at that sector too. So you see that there are systems, bits of, of policies that are being undertaken by the, the, the government to enable us to uh, solve some of the challenges that are in the sector. All right, let's, uh, let's look at the curriculum again. You just mentioned uh, uh, the requisite education qualifications uh, by teachers and all of that. This is just one aspect of the issue of human resource. So if you look at the current human resource, what is your view on preparedness generally to embrace this new curriculum? Yeah, ideally... The, with, with the introduction of a new curriculum come the, the, this September, right now from this time to September, there should be constant engagement with the, the, the teachers on the field. So uh, constant workshop, conferences to break down the curriculum to the level of the teachers. And, and uh, our text review that some of these things have started uh, being undertaken by the relevant bodies. But one thing that we need to understand that the teacher should be made to understand and appreciate and own the curriculum in order that it will be implemented to the satisfaction of the uh, uh, of those who, who developed it or of the of those who uh, helped to bring it into being. So it's 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 it, it depends on them for them to I mean the Ministry of Education for them to constantly engage these teachers and explain the curriculum to them. So that they'll be able to do, uh, they'll be able to implement it as perfectly as we we, we have we, we want them to. So, for the benefit of our uh, viewers and listeners who might not have a practical idea of what this new curriculum is is intended to achieve. I want you to attempt, actually, uh, you might not be able to uh, say it all, but I want you to attempt to tell us exactly what benefits uh, the basic school pupil will get from this curriculum that they didn't get in the last one. All right, so I, I, uh, you look at the basic education subjects that were supposed to be undertaken by the students were uh, around 10 or 9, depending on whether you're doing mm. French or not. You look at the current curriculum, the subjects that are supposed to be taken by the students are around seven, including physical education. So there's English, there's math, there's science, there's history, there's creative arts, and there's our world, our people, and then there's PE, that is physical education. Now, the, this goes with set competencies. That's why I, I, I said, I tried to explain what we mean by a standard-based mm. uh, curriculum. So this goes with set competencies. These are competencies that students are supposed to exhibit after they have gone through the, uh, the curriculum. And this is different from the previous one, because in the previous one, what normally happens with those kinds of curriculum is that the teacher determines or the teacher comes up with activities that 
the student should perform in order to achieve a certain aim or goal that has been set. But this one, because it's a standard base, we have core competences such as critical thinking and problem solving. We have creativity and innovation. We have communication and collaboration. We have cultural identity and global citizenship. So ideally, if the student is taking through this curriculum very well, as it starts from the KG to primary six, the student should be able to improve on his critical thinking and problem solving uh, ability. He should be creative and innovative. He should be able to collaborate and communicate effectively with his colleagues. Mm. But let me say this. All these, all these, all these are based on two important things. The resource available in the schools and the quality of teachers that will handle this. Government should, as a matter of urgency, tackle these two challenges. All right, uh, Peter. We're grateful for our time. Peter Party. And Welcome back. Now, the National Democratic Congress, NDC, is calling on President Naneku Fuado to publish the Enel Short Commission report in a re press release uh, signed by its communications officer, Sami Jemfi. The party said the president should make the full report public without any delay. The Enel Short Commission of Inquiry was set up by uh, President Kufuad on the back of violence which ensued during the Ayahuasca West war gone by election on January 31. Uh, we were expecting to get onto the telephone lines to uh, speak with uh, the spokesperson, government spokesperson on governance and legal affairs, Herbert Krapa, but we are unable to uh, raise him on the telephone line. So following reports of controversial uh, classes in the newly uh, drafted public universities bill, uh, a ranking member on Education Committee of Parliament, Peter Nochu Kotoi, says the committee will uh, kick against the sections of the policy which undermines the autonomy of the university. Among other things, uh, the draft bill gives the president the power to dissolve and reconstitute the governing councils of public universities in cases of emergencies. So far, uh, I have not seen the draft bill in its full form, but uh, with the pieces and the bits of information that we have gathered so far, emanating from uh, the draft bill, uh, you will realize that uh, the bill in its form, if it is allowed to pass, is going to have a very telling effect on academic freedom of the universities. Because the bill is attempting to take away the autonomy of the universities. Uh, every university in this country is established by an act of parliament. And by that act of parliament, the university is empowered to run it, its own um, activities. It has its own regulations, which they call statutes. So in those statutes, the universities are able to manage their own affairs right from uh, the appointment of a, a vice chancellor to academic work. Once you have institutions backed by Act of Parliament, you should allow those institutions to perform within the law that establishes them. And then what government is to do is once you have your representatives over there, you allow them to monitor and report back to you. It, in the first case, it is the necessary interference of government that created the problem. You see it. So if government backs out of its interference in the affairs of public universities, this situation wouldn't have arisen. Now, Member of Parliament for Sherman has sued government for so sourcing $12.5 million agreement uh, for medical deliveries via drones to Fly Zipline Ghana Limited. Operators of the service Fly Zipline, who have also been joined to the suit, were not the only company providing the service at the time they were awarded the contract. Speaking to journalists in Accra, and as Nogbe uh, noted, government failed to do due diligence. services of Fly Zipline, which was subsequently approved by Parliament on December 11 last year. Fly Zipline was supposed to deliver blood, products, medicines, vaccines and other products to health facilities in the country using drones. Per the 
million dollar contract fly zip line will run over 150 flights per day from each of its four distribution centers. The award of the contract has come with some controversies and won't go anytime soon. It's saying that before you go into single source procurement, you must make public notice. Public notice means that you must publicize it that you are going to enter into this agreement. Is there any company that is available to, uh, I mean, to contract this particular, I mean, uh, contract with you? Now, if there's no company, then you have to apply to the PPA, that is the Public Procurement Authority, to give you approval. Now, the government of Ghana did not do, did not follow Section 42, because we have a lot of entities in the system. During the town hall meeting last week, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia announced operations will start later this month at the first facility at Ominako in the eastern region. But the Sherman MP, Ernest Nogbe, says government failed to do due diligence. We have the Swoop Aero and then DHL in Tanzania, and they are also into this business. So if they had opened it, then it means there's a little competition. And if there's competition, then you realize that there will be value for money because everybody will want to win. On the Trade Unions Congress, TUC has rejected the 50% cut in benchmark values announced by government last week. According to the TUC, the move would increase import and further depreciate the city. Secretary General of TUC, Dr. Yaoba, who spoke with correspondent Daniel Opoku in Accra, said the 50% cut in benchmark values should rather have been on selected imported items. The Trade Union Congress, TUC, was saddened about the 50% cut in benchmark values of imports announced by the Vice President at a town hall meeting last week. But the TUC, after carefully analyzing the tariff regime, said the 50% would increase unnecessary imports. The TUC again argued that a reduction in tariff would affect the strength of the city against the other foreign currencies. Secretary General of TUC, Dr. Yaoban, rather suggested that the 50% should have been on some selected imports. I never expected that we would do a blanket 50% reduction in everything. Mm. Not everything good. that comes to this country. No, I, say it's not good. I don't think it's good for everything. Uh, no, it's too much. Especially for those items you can produce here. Maybe government might have targeted it a bit so that all the things we cannot produce or we don't have the capacity to produce but are good for us. Those ones, if you reduce, it increases standard of living. We need to do more in the area of export. I don't think the policy to reduce tariffs blanket the way they have done it is the best. He again said government should immediately review the 50% cut in import duty. We need to start thinking about import substitution. And if you want to think about import substitution, the way to go is to reduce tariffs. No. The way to go is to impose tariffs within the WTO framework. And we have that right to impose 99% tax on rice and 99% tax on poultry, to stop that. And that will encourage Ghanaians to produce these two items right here in this country. In another development, the Trade Union Congress has praised the government for creating 350,000 jobs in the public sector. It also lauded the government's efforts in exiting from the IMF program. You know one thing that has happened in 2019, which is the best for this country, our exit from IMF. Mm. That has given us the free hand to manage ourselves. For the first time in many years, or at least in three or four years, yeah. we are going to see if we are disciplined enough. Mm. And that is why government has established the Financial Stability Council, Council yeah. then the Fiscal Stability Council. Exactly. Now we are expecting the Social Partnership Council, okay. who should be launched very soon, so that employers and labor and government will come together and say, hey, don't go there. This is still news at 10 live from the news hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can also hear me on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back.